Well, its beer was famed across the land and it was in business for the best part of 200 years. Well, Sunland's Vaux Brewery was founded in 1806 and it employed hundreds of people. The smell of hops and barley drifting for miles across Wearside on brewing days is still a fond memory. But in the late 90s, Swallow, the hotel company founded by Vaux, ended up becoming a more powerful beast than it and decided to shut the profitable brewery down to try and sell off the land. And now, as we head towards the 20th anniversary of that fateful day, a feature-length film is to be released charting its downfall. You couldn't go to Sunland without actually seeing, like, the Vaux Brewery. You know, you couldn't be in Sunland without smelling Vaux Brewery that was there. If you could get into Vaux, yes. it did really well. Because it, it was yeah. the biggest place, wasn't it, in, yeah. in town, more or less? Well, it's certainly in the town centre. It was a sense of huge pride that I was involved with a company that was so integral to Sunderland and in everything that we did, we tried to remain very much part of Sunderland. The closure of Vaux was a major blow to the morale of the city, which had already suffered a great deal. Our board fell out with itself. We, we committed corporate suicide. Uh, I do remember walking back up into the office and nobody spoke. We all just sat down and... Mm -hmm. I, I don't think we knew what to say to each other, because I think we really knew then that that was going to be the end, yeah. You think so many mistakes made. There was a mistake made by a bunch of London financiers who decide that this is worth a lot more ripped to bits. Forget about the people. Right at the end of the day, I remember I was probably the last to leave the brewery, and I re vividly remember I placed, placed a, a kiss on the sign that said Vaultsbury and left. Still brings a tear to my eye now. It is an incredible story. A passion for Vaux, Sunderland's Lost Brewery, has been made by Marie Garder and Mark Thorburn from Lonely Tower Film and Media. And Mark popped in for a chat a little earlier. The Vaux site itself has been a very physical reminder of what used to be there, the, the absence. Um, Frank Nicholson, who was the, uh, the managing director of Vaux Breweries when it closed, has described it as a scar on the city, and scars are very difficult things to heal. Obviously, progress is being made. There are There is now a building on there, the beam is on there, and plans for further development. But the, um, the controversy surrounding the site from a documentary film production point of view is another angle within the Vaux story that just makes it such a fabulous Sunderland and Wearside story to tell. Mm. Why did you decide to do this then? Because it, it's a bit niche, isn't it, really? Well, it, it began out of a project that um, my partner, Marie Gardner, was working on a book project with the History Press called Sunderland Industrial Giant. And uh, in the book, Marie was researching the lost industries of Sunderland and kind of realised through her own family connections that the people who can talk with first-hand experience about those lost industries are at the very end. So if you don't capture those recollections and those memories now, they're going to be lost forever. And whilst working on that, that book project with, with Marie, we got in touch with um, people who'd worked with Vaux Breweries. And Frank Nicholson, the former MD, uh, Sir Paul Nicholson, the Vaux Group chairman, and many other people who'd sort of worked in, in the brewery on the shop floor, as it were. And once that book had been published, it, it kind of dawned on us via those connections that there really is a passion for the Vaux Brewery. And trying to put it into words, what, what the tangible connection is, is, is quite difficult because you talk about shipbuilding and you talk about glass making and you talk about mining and these are all industries that Sunderland and the North East as a whole is very connected to, even though they've gone. Beer seemed to seep through all of these industries. You know, the shipyard mm. workers would enjoy the beer once they'd finished their shifts or indeed during their shifts in, in the yeah. old days. You know, Certainly the glass workers working in the hot environment, drinking beer was sort of part of, part of the routine to replenish what they'd lost. So the Vaux Brewery became... One phrase that I've used is if you were to open a metaphoric vein on Sunderland, it would probably bleed double max in beer. Yeah. Um, it, it was everywhere. And a lot of these products were lost for a time and are now being reborn, aren't they, in uh, microbreweries. The, the recipes have been bought and 
they're uh, they're back in production again. Yes, they are. I mean, the the documentary film that that we're producing is called uh, A Passion for Vaux, Sunderland's Lost Brewery. And one of the curious things about the Vaux brands is they lost the brewery, but they didn't actually lose all of the beers. Um, because uh, the Maxim Brewery, which was founded by directors who used to work for Vaux, uh, were able to maintain those brands and continue producing them. And we're delighted that they've come on board with us you know, um, in the production of this film. Yeah. In the film, uh, one of the guys is talking about um, how they just lost the shipyards and we've just marked the 25th anniversary of the closure of the last shipyard on BBC Newcastle in the last uh, three or four months. Um, there was a lot going on during that period what we had here was a thriving business and this bizarre scenario where the brewery set up a hotel chain and the hotel chain became more powerful than the brewery and decided to close it down and it was a profitable business this is this is again one of the aspects about this this story that that makes it so heart-wrenching uh you can argue about the closure of the mines and, and the shipyards and the economic reasons for that but why do you close a brewery that's making a profit? To, to, to most people, myself included, that seems ridiculous. However, when you speak to, um, to, to Frank Nicholson, the MD, and, and Sir Paul and other members who were part of the board at the time, what happened was the Vaux group, which contained, as you say, much more than breweries, it was hotel chains, it was care homes, all kinds of businesses. Mm. The Vaux overall group decided that pretty much the selling off the land associated with the breweries would be more profitable than continuing to make beer. So it, it was about making more profit as opposed to closing something that wasn't profitable. Mm. Um, when that decision was made, Frank Nicholson, along with other directors who, who did not want to see the breweries close, decided to start a management buyout. Controversy within the board, Frank uses the phrase, the board committed corporate suicide, fell out with itself. Yeah. Uh, they did not accept that management buyout and still went through with, with the closure. Incredible period. I mean, I remember myself, my colleague Russ Ward, one of our, our Sunderland reporters, and Frank sitting having a pint in the brewery tap the week it closed, and I just couldn't believe what was happening at the time. It's going to be an, an incredible trip down memory lane again. You're evoking the memories of the smell of the brewing days drifted across Wearside, the Vaux stray horses. That's right. The, the 2nd of July is the, the actual date that, um, that the brewery gates closed for the final time, and the film will be ready uh, by then. We'll have screenings around Sunderland. Um, commemorative DVDs will be available. One of the problems that we've had, which is a great problem, is we have far too much material. Mm. Um, so there will be the documentary film, but there will also be an accompanying DVD with the extras, as it were, all of the, all of the bits and pieces and the fantastic stories that we couldn't, uh, couldn't get into the, the documentary itself. One thing that we do want to do though is to say about this film is it celebrates working people of Sunderland yes it's about the loss of a brewery and yes of course it's about the dramatic circumstances that surrounded that but there are two things that everybody that we've spoken to has said that Vaux was about family and it was about comradeship and that work ethic that working spirit still exists in Sunderland you know, there is still big business, there's still industry with Nissan and everything else, but there are many, many people, smaller businesses, um, like the Maxim Brewery, who are finding a new future, finding a new way, moving forwards. And that work ethic, that work spirit is still there. You know, the loss of the industries obviously was devastating, but that doesn't mean that that spirit and that drive has disappeared from Sunderland. Indeed, not Mark Thorburn there, and we'll keep you posted when that Vox film comes out. It's expected to be around about late June. It is, though, for...